MuseScore recently came out with a new update and that is a 4.0 update. And people are asking, should I switch from Sibelius software to MuseScore? And in this video, I may not answer the question directly for you because you may have different opinions and different preferences for each software, but we're going to take a look at both pieces of software to see which one may be the best for you at this moment in time. To give you a little bit of context, MuseScore software was always free and you could buy software from Sibelius. They have a couple options. They have the Sibelius Artist and the Sibelius Ultimate. However, they do have a free software called Sibelius First. I feel like it would be a fair comparison to compare a free software with another free software, the MuseScore 4.0 update and Sibelius first. I hope that this video helps answer this question because I'm going to be comparing apples to apples. I'm going to be comparing both free software. And if MuseScore had an upgraded version, then I would definitely review that. But just for the sake of this video at this time, there is no such thing. There is no paid upgrade for MuseScore. So we're going to get right into it. And we're going to talk about the, the pros and the cons of both MuseScore 4.0 and Sibelius. So let's dive right in. Let's go ahead and talk about MuseScore first. So I'm going to update MuseScore 4. This is a recent download from the MuseScore website. I'm going to click on New Score. I'm going to go to Choose Instrument. And generally speaking, the aesthetic of MuseScore 4 is really nice. I think you have the option of doing a light mode or a dark mode. I prefer to dark mode personally because it helps me save battery on my Mac and also it looks really cool on the screen it looks a little bit more uh, sleek. So that's just a preference of mine, but that's something you could also change in the settings. I am a violinist, so I'm going to go to the strings. I'm going to go towards a regular solo violin and actually later on in this video stick around because I'm going to compare and contrast both sounds of the violin specifically because I'm a violinist and we're going to compare and contrast between the MuseScore MIDI file sounds and we're going to compare the Sibelius sound. But for now, we're going to go with the MuseScore for the violin. Everything is good. So I'm going to click done. Everything is right there. So the biggest difference in the MuseScore 4 is definitely the MIDI sounds. Is That is the biggest overhaul. And there are tiny little tweaks that I want to just point out very quickly. Everything you need is right in front of you. You have, you are able to go towards the eighth note. And this is, this is a difference between Sibelius, which I'll get to in a moment. What's great about this is that everything is up here and the tab is really easy to access. I think well, the downside is I wish there was a window or if there is an option in MuseScore 4.0 that I'm not aware of, leave a comment down below, but I think what is great about Sibelius is that you have this tiny little window that you can drag and drop to wherever part of the score. I think it's a really cool way to increase your productivity and your workflow. But for the sake of the argument and for the sake of the video, you have all these easy to access, you know, options. You have tempo, pitch, everything is right there on the left. And you have a mixer, which I'll also explain that Sibelius first also has a mixer. But for some reason, this looks a little sleeker based on what you're getting. Of course, this is a free product. So very quickly that to get the MuseScore 4.0 MIDI sound, you have to download uh, Muse Hub, which is over here. I've downloaded the woodwinds. I've downloaded the, um, oh, where's the vial, the strings, I think. And yes, here you go. So you have the strings right over here and I already have that specific sound collection, sound library downloaded. And you have the Muse sounds, Muse strings, and I could choose whichever one I want. That's a distinct feature. And the MS basic, that's the Muse sounds basic. You're gonna find that sound in the previous update, uh, the three point something update. So just to be clear that this is it, does, it doesn't come standard. You have to download that as a separate thing. So everything is here. I'm going to click the mixer so I can read the score a little more. And yeah, so let's go ahead. Let's play some. I'm going to bring that up and maybe just click on my preferences so I have all the sounds taken care of. 
great. So that is the sound of the violin solo on the new score software. So let's go ahead to maybe give you a little bit of a glimpse of what that might sound like with a violin section. And what's great is that you could adjust the volumes over here as a mixer, like a, like a recording engineer. And you can hear right away, let me just play that again. A little bit more luscious, a little bit more beautiful, full resonant string section. So that is a key feature in, in MuseScore. However, what I'm finding with MuseScore is that if I press the play button, for instance, it can be quite um, muggy. So you're going to have to put in specific articulation for whatever ensemble. This is just an example for orchestral sounds, of course, like I'm not going to you know, go further into depth. And if you're interested in learning more about the Muse score for sound specifically, then you can go ahead, click on the link above this video to learn more in that video. And also we have some other just regular software features. You know, you can go to edit view, add format, all that kind of stuff. You know, transposition is also key here. But what I'm finding though, and maybe this is just for me, or maybe I, with the hardware that I have, I'm using an M1 MacBook Air. Sometimes, not always, but sometimes the software kind of crashes on me. And let's see if it doesn't crash on me this time. So I'm just gonna transpose it maybe a third down, for instance, right? And I'm gonna click on OK and actually. It worked, so it worked fine. Let's see if it plays here. Okay, so it didn't crash. Sometimes for me, it does crash. The software does crash. I'm not sure why, and that's something maybe that could be addressed in a future software update for MuseScore. Hope that's my request to the almighty software engineers of MuseScore. <laughs> but let's get on with the video. I wanna show you the difference between MuseScore 4 and Sibelius first. So I'm gonna go ahead and switch over to Sibelius. Um, it's a pretty minimalistic software, as you can see. And I'm gonna hit Command N for a new score. And what I will do just for, um, just for simplicity's sake, I'm gonna go to treble and I'm just gonna have a four four time signature. I'm gonna change my instruments and I'm going to do, I don't know what's the difference between violin Roman numeral one and violin actual number one. I'm not sure why that is the case, but you can see already if there are some similarities between Muse score four and Sibelius. So I think that the Muse score people kind of took that from Sibelius or vice versa. Let's just take a look at that again. If I'm gonna open a new score, for instance, in Muse score four, I'm gonna try to, Okay, not sure why that's not happening, but maybe I have to save it first. I'm gonna to save to computer and then untitled score. Uh, we're gonna replace that because it's untitled. So I'm gonna click on a new or maybe, I'm not sure why it's not working. So this is this is like one of the tedious things that is not working about Muse score. And yeah, so let me, oh, there it is. So I'm not sure why that happened. Maybe it was because I was on the full screen, but either way, let's go ahead. It's very similar, as you can see, compared to Sibelius. It's a very similar kind of process if you wanna choose specific instruments for your uh, for your score. So I'm gonna click on, um, I'm, just, I'm actually gonna cancel this so you can see the difference over here. Very similar, although it's a, a little bit more friendly. It looks a little better, like the aesthetic, the UI, the user interface, the design seems a little nicer um, to the eyes. The font seems to be really good. Strings, bows, violin section, you click the arrow, bada bing, bada boom, and you're done. So what we're gonna do now, we're gonna click on Sibelius, we put that on full screen, and uh, let's go ahead, click Command N, and change my instruments. I'm gonna go to violin 
one. I'm not going to click on violin solo. I'm going to click on violin one. I'm going to add to score and I'm going to click OK. And actually change instruments. I'm going to delete from score and just go with violin one. And I'm not sure why it's, I don't want to quit Sibelius. That's not what I want to do. Hold on, let me start it all over again. So, by the way, also very quickly, I can change it to landscape. I can change it to portrait. In this case, I'm going to do it a portrait. And then I'm going to, okay, here we are. So now what I wish MuseScore 4 had compared to Sibelius is this little, is this little window over here. What is great about MuseScore is that you have everything on the top, but I wish that there was an option where I can take all those functions and put it with me wherever I am editing or composing on the screen. So that is a nice little feature of Sibelius. And let's just dive into some of the features on the top of Sibelius, the note input, the notations, the text, the play, which is very similar. You can play your score out for realization, uh, the layout, the appearance, you can actually annotate, review if you're collaborating with another composer or if you're collaborating with your teacher. I know that Sibelius is pretty is pretty popular with teachers, especially if you're in conservatories or collegiate music schools, etc. So what's great is that it's simple. I just wish that it, there was more. And I think all of that up here compared to MuseScore Everything you see here, you don't you don't find that in the tiny little window in Sibelius. And I wish that I had that option because it makes it it makes the flow a lot easier. I'm finding that with MuseScore 4, I have to go to the top left, I have to click and then compose. Top left, click compose. And of course I can compose with a MIDI keyboard or I can compose via my laptop keyboard. I just wish that there was maybe a feature that can that can directly be inserted into MuseScore. But either way, Sibelius has it. If that's something that is like a deal breaker for you, then Sibelius has it, MuseScore doesn't. So let's dive into the whole MIDI sound because that is important. And just to give you an actualization of what these software, like the differences between these software sound like. So I'm gonna click on quarter note. I'm gonna click on... already kind of night and day between the, the quality of sound. And this is a violin section. This is not a violin solo. I'm going to spare you your ears because the violin solo sound is not that pleasant to the ear, just FYI. And I can go ahead and play this. I can click over here on the back arrow here. I'm going to play this. Into It just sounds like a computerized generated sound. And I can I can see why there's a lot of frustration with going f f like to Sibelius because of this issue that the MIDI does not sound that good. And um, especially with a free software. And I don't think that there is any difference in sound libraries between MuseScore 4 and Sibelius. There's not that much of a difference in the sound library. I would say that the workflow, if you're really into the workflow side of things, maybe Sibelius could be a better fit for you. But if you're wanting that, like a realistic sound coming from your music score, hence MuseScore, haha, then MuseScore could be for you. If you're able to deal with all the bugs that needs to be fixed, if you're patient, I know that a lot of people in my other video have a lot of comments that they lost files that they've been working on for months. If you're concerned about that, be sure that you have a backup to your backup that you can open files in MuseScore 3 still and then continue your workflow on MuseScore 4 because sometimes it may happen to you with MuseScore that you might want to back everything up. Just, just FYI. Sibelius, of course, is run by a bigger company. It's run by a company called Avid, for which you have a lot of software engineers running C++ programming. And you have a lot of people working to make Sibelius just an efficient software. It's not the best looking software, but it definitely gets the job done for anyone who is wanting to compose. So there you have it. And also, just very quickly, the fonts 
quite different between Sibelius and MuseScore. Let me just switch that over. Yeah, aesthetically, I think MuseScore is a nicer looking user interface. Just really nice. I just wish that there was that little window in MuseScore 4 that Sibelius has like over here, because that really will increase the workflow for a lot of musicians, a lot of composers. And yeah, what do you, what do you think of the differences between MuseScore and Sibelius? Because these are two free softwares and I would love to get your opinion down in the comment section below. Would you make the switch from Sibelius to MuseScore? I don't know if you're interested in keeping all your files and not losing them, Sibelius could still be the way to go. But if you're looking to transition uh, as if you're a teacher or composer, you might want to wait a little bit. You might have to do a little extra work to back up your files. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you in the next video.